Canada has one of the cleanest electricity grids in the world, and the country has ambitions to get even cleaner, with Prime Minister Trudeau promising that Canada's grid will be net zero by 2035. However, Canada is about to hit a major setback in achieving these goals. The problem lies in Ontario, Canada's largest province and home to almost two-fifths of Canada's population. Currently, Ontario is above average when it comes to generating clean electricity. Almost all of the province's electricity comes from non-emitting sources. But in 2025, a full 15% of its clean electricity is scheduled to come offline, and the gap in production will likely be made up with fossil fuels. So why is this happening, and is there anything that can be done about it? Well, to understand why this setback is happening, we first need to go back in time and understand how Ontario cleaned up its electricity grid. In the late 90s, environmental and medical groups started advocating for a phase-out of coal electricity generation in Ontario, mainly due to concerns over air quality and the negative health impacts of coal. These grassroots efforts were successful, and in the 2003 election campaign, all three major political parties pledged to phase out coal generation in the province. There were a few factors that made shutting down coal generation more politically palatable in Ontario than it is in other jurisdictions. For one, the Ontario government owned all of the province's coal plants, so it could absorb the shutdown costs. Coal also wasn't mined in Ontario, so not many jobs would be lost by the phase-out. At the time, Coal made up about a quarter of Ontario's electricity supply. Coal was completely phased out by 2014, and that 25% gap in electricity production was largely filled with nuclear power. Today, nuclear still makes up the majority of Ontario's electricity. All that power comes from just three nuclear stations, Bruce, Darlington, and Pickering. It's that last station, Pickering, that's important here. Today. Pickering supplies close to 15% of Ontario's electricity, all without emitting greenhouse gases, but it's scheduled to be shut down in 2025. So why does it have to be shut down? Well, it's old. Pickering started operations in 1971 and was expanded in 1983, which makes it Canada's oldest nuclear generating station. And 2025 is actually later than Pickering was originally meant to shut down. Its operations have been extended to help maintain Ontario's supply of electricity while Bruce and Darlington temporarily reduce their output through refurbishments. Wait, refurbishments? If the other nuclear reactors are being refurbished, why not do the same for Pickering and keep it running? Well, the Ontario government is already spending billions to refurbish the newer Bruce and Darlington stations and decided not to refurbish Pickering too. In the early 2000s, there were some refurbishments done on Pickering A, which is the oldest part of Pickering that was completed in 1971, but those refurbishments went massively over budget and were not fully completed. Okay, so Pickering is definitely shutting down in 2025. Thankfully, Ontario's not bringing back coal to replace it, but the gap in electricity production will likely be made up with natural gas, which is still a CO2-emitting fossil fuel. But why does it have to be replaced with natural gas? Why not replace it with another non-emitting power source? Because the government just never made a plan to replace it with non-emitting power sources, despite knowing for over a decade that Pickering would have to be shut down eventually, which isn't really a great reason. But it might not be too late to find more environmentally friendly replacements for Pickering, at least according to this report from Pollution Probe. Pickering generates around 20 terawatt hours of electricity every year, but because Ontario actually has a surplus of baseload electricity supply, Pollution Probe estimated that only 10 terawatt hours of additional electricity production would be required to replace Pickering. And since Pickering's electricity heavily supplies the Greater Toronto Area, the report proposes that Ontario could reduce the need for natural gas through a combination of reducing the GTA's demand for electricity while increasing electricity production from non-emitting sources. Pollution probe suggestions to reduce electricity demand include making new buildings more energy efficient and providing incentives to reduce electricity use during peak hours. On the supply side, 
The report suggests installing solar panels on roofs and using waste heat instead of natural gas or electricity to heat buildings. The report also suggests using bidirectional charging to essentially turn electric vehicles into mobile batteries that store energy when there's excess supply of clean electricity, and sell that energy back to the grid when demand increases, which would reduce the need for natural gas generation during peak periods. There's another elephant in the room that I feel needs to be addressed, and that's hydropower from Quebec. In researching this video, I noticed that a lot of groups online seem to be convinced that buying hydropower from Quebec would be a silver bullet to simultaneously provide clean power to Ontario and reduce electricity bills. This made me ask the question, could Ontario replace Pickering's electricity with hydropower imports from Quebec? The answer is a resounding, maybe. There are already electrical interties between Ontario and Quebec, but those are used to exchange power depending on the demand in each province. They're not meant for importing firm baseload power. If Ontario wanted to import firm power from Quebec to replace the baseload power generated by Pickering, more interties between the two provinces would have to be constructed. Furthermore, Quebec actually imports power from Ontario during the winter, so to provide Ontario with firm, year-round capacity, Hydro-Quebec would need to build additional resources above what they currently have for their own internal needs. All that additional infrastructure would cost billions, but would it be worth it? Well, all the articles and reports against importing more hydropower seem to be written or paid for by those who have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo. On the other hand, the most vocal group in favor of Quebec hydropower is an anti-nuclear environmental group who has a vested interest in shutting down Ontario's nuclear fleet. In any case, the Ontario government seems to have decided against the imports, at least for now. There is one more energy source that could help reduce Ontario's reliance on natural gas in the future, and that's a small modular reactor that will be built alongside the existing nuclear reactors at the Darlington site. The BWRX-300 is a small modular nuclear reactor designed by GE Hitachi, which would generate 300 megawatts of electricity, and it should be completed by 2028. That's a little later than Pickering is shutting down, and its power output is nowhere near what Pickering currently generates, but it's certainly better than nothing. What makes small modular reactors unique, other than their small size, is that they can be built in factories and have their parts shipped instead of needing to be constructed on site, which should make them less costly than traditional nuclear reactors. And while the BWRX-300 might not generate much power compared to Pickering, it's not the only SMR that will be built in Canada. The governments of Ontario, New Brunswick, Alberta, and Saskatchewan are all collaborating to build a number of SMRs over the next decade, which would help Canada reach its goal of net zero electricity generation by 2035. But if you want to learn more about these small nuclear reactors, you'll have to watch this video next.